Grind here, and we have a very special video today for you. We're going to be testing out by popular demand and the win of the vote the basket hilted sword from Medieval Shop, a uh, Scottish basket hilted sword from Medieval Shop, or back sword. And yes, it is a back sword. Traditionally, a lot of these were broadswords, and what people think of is the earlier period broadsword, but a lot of them had gotten narrower uh, later century and they had made back swords out of them. And it, back sword, the advantages to it, uh, you have a narrower blade. It's fatter on the back, but it's good for thrusting, and we've got a lot of reach with this. With the same amount of weight and less uh, profile taper, and using the back instead of the width to, to give it the rigidity it needs for the cut, uh, you get a longer blade. So we've got a blade that could stand up against rapiers, which were around as well at the same time period, and, and saber-like swords as well, sabers. Uh, you've also got a uh, single edge. It's a very good edge. Um, I was just marveling at that earlier, that... It's extreme, so it, it comes sharp, so be careful with it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and test the cutting ability. So that's the only thing that would be a big question. The back should give it nice cutting ability and less blade wobble and so on, but uh, that's what I wanna test. I wanna test the cutting ability. Because a lot of times these broadswords were used with uh, bayonet, against bayonets with a targe, and they would use the targe to parry the bayonet, according to the stories, and use the sword to uh, attack with. Of course, they also had uh, spikes on their targes as well, so it could be used as a weapon. Both these could be used independently. Uh, this Glasgow-style uh, basket, very ornate detail, very beautiful, much like our dirk that we tested in the other videos, could be paired with this as well as an offhand, um, which just performed so well. I mean, it was amazing. Just like the uh, Claymore that we tested, which is called the Claymore from Medieval Shop, which is actually an early period uh, greatsword, not a late century uh, greatsword, but it's an early period type greatsword or two-handed sword, or, or heavy longsword. Some people, if you want to argue about it. But uh, we tested that out, and that was some extreme carnage. I'm hoping that this does very well. We're going to be testing against one of our better analog heads, one of the best I've made, and see how well it can cut into it, if it will go through a skull, uh, what kind of uh, carnage or damage we can do with it. Uh, and I think that's the biggest thing to test. Uh, we'll be doing that soon, so let's get going and see what happens. Okay, back swords are made to be defensive even without a shield. They have a basket, and that's one of the defensive things about them is the basket. And this one being a lighter blade, like a back sword, gives it a lot more ability to defend yourself and recover quickly. So this would be great for the thrust, even though it has a single edge, but I think it'd be really good for cutting as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try it out here in a defensive manner. I will come in and I will cut and see how quick I can defend and see how well it cuts. Not bad. Got a perfectly clean cut. It's beautiful. Really wet newspaper. It took me a while, but it soaked it longer than Let's go ahead and try it out here. Beautiful. I am quite well impressed with this. Not bad for a lighter blade coming through that much rolled newspaper. Might try a little thicker for the chance. clean cuts, both of them. The sword performed extremely well. I am intentionally, this is impressive, I'm sorry. This is something that I can't believe that that light of blade is cutting this off. This is approximately three inches right here. And look how well it cut. That was beautiful, not hardly any tearing or anything. Extremely impressed. This is a lot tougher than tatami. This is tightly rolled wet newspaper. That is a perfectly clean cut from this edge. I mean, I can't believe such a light edge. I mean, it's got a, it's got a back to it. It's a back sword and it's got some heft, even though it's, uh, you know, not as broad as a broadsword and it's nice and long and good for thrusting as well. Those are some beautiful cuts. When you really look at that, that is a beautiful clean cut. Well, oh, this is the right piece. <laughs> I think we have our piece over here. Beautiful clean cut. Check it out. Went clean through. That is so impressive. I am very impressed with the steel quality. It holds up well, and the edge is razor sharp. Especially if we're going through three inches. 
All right, we've got our new ballistics gelatin head. It's made out of 20% gel. It's very tough gelatin. We did that because a lot of the thin areas of the flesh, like on the skull, uh, real thin gel, it's 10% doesn't really behave as well. We love viewer input. Thanks for everybody who uh, sent us links to uh, something like this on Mythbusters where they used a, an artery or a uh, vein. And here we've got an artery, uh, looks like the juggler, uh, coming down from the uh, skull. And it goes all the way around and back up. So if we cut that, you're definitely going to see leakage. You're going to see it pouring out. Because uh, the skull is full of our special blood concoction, which uh, Maureen actually doesn't uh, give much resistance in cutting when it's fresh and new and not in a laboratory. Uh, it acts pretty much like having brain matter in there. Then we have our jaw, which is a PVC jaw, and our PVC uh, uh, vertebrae, or, or the actual bone holding the neck up, our vertebrae. So the whole idea is here, we've got a pretty good simulation. This is actually, in our uh, uh, best of our ability of, of uh, gauging it, it's tougher than a human head. We're going to test out our back sword today, our basket hilted Scottish back sword from Medieval Shop, and we're going to see what it can do to this and what kind of carnage it can have. Because most of these men would only be wearing maybe a hat at the most. Uh, helms weren't real common at the time period when the sword was used. Mostly lots of uh, heavy wool and cloth and linens and stuff were worn. That's about it. So let's go ahead and test it out and see how it works. Start off cutting with this. Gosh, we just capped the skull with that. A lot of times they say back swords don't have that kind of cutting ability as like, let's say, a, a broader type blade or what people know as broad swords like earlier period swords. That is nasty. That truly did its job. Now, see what extra cut we'd like to do here. I'm thinking I will try going into the other side of the head because this is a common uh, technique. If I was standing here with a targe, let's say I was fighting with a targe, and I had just stopped a bayonet, I could be coming down with a cut this one. So let's see what that does. Ah! Ah! Yeah, I just missed our skull, but I severed the entire side of the head through the jaw. And we cut our artery, so he is bleeding out inside. I don't know if you all can see this. Let's aim a little bit higher and try to hit that skull on the other side. Here. Okay, now just like if I had my targe and that uh, bayonet came in uh, from the other troop, and I'm using my uh, targe and my, which was I'm using my dirt, uh, I would parry, or even with this, I'd parry, and I'm going to step in and try a good blow to the top of the See what happens. Ah! Ah! I think we just pretty much came back and got some of the same area of skull and cut it off. <laughs> Let's go one more time. Ah! Well, that was nasty. We cut a whole chunk out of the uh, jaw that time. And we've got lots of blood coming in here. Out. We came in and cut a V out of the face, but we went through another part of the uh, jaw and went all the way into the bottom jaw and cut it through. So that tells me that's got some extreme force going through that much. And this time we've totally severed that. I mean, it is leaking out at the moment. So. cleaved right into the skull again and we took a piece off the top. I'm thinking that it's definitely going through no matter what. Very, very nice. Let's go ahead and see what happens if I leave a little bit lower. We went clean through our artery, and it looks like that what ended up happening is we ended up throwing the, the actual head off. But I still think that's extremely impressive from a lighter blade. Something with this kind of reaction speed for defense uh, and unarmored combat, like Lost Fetchton, uh, that is impressive. For that thin a blade, and as well as it held up and how it cut into that, uh, that's a dead end. We've got our, now we totally have our uh, artery severed. Most certainly impressive. I think our swords performed extremely well. Uh, set him up here. He doesn't need to be with me anymore. I don't think he wants to be either after I've used him so badly. 
but uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, give us a like if you like the video and tell people about it. Uh, you can go by and check us out on Facebook. We have the uh, thread and Elgrims of Well of Remembrance, and you can like us there. We'll release our content there and other things that we find interesting. Uh, we also have our closed group if you want to give suggestions, like the people who came up with the artery idea. So we test out an actual artery idea, see if we can cut it, and which did it help improve our tests immensely to see if we got a kill or not. Uh, go ahead and uh, join us there at our uh, Thane Thrand uh, YouTube boat crew, which you have to, it's a private group or a closed group, and I'll most certainly accept you if you're interested. With me and Elgrim we both run that site. Uh, you can give us input like that, give us ideas for videos, tell us what you'd like tested, uh, get special input, feedback. Uh, also, if you want to help us out to afford to make our heads and everything that we do and uh, set up our set and get new equipment, you can help us out through Patreon at Thane Thr uh, It's at uh, the www.patreon.com slash Thran. And you can help us out there monthly, or if you like, you can use uh, Thane, the uh, Thane Thran uh, uh, at, at uh, yeah, I can't talk right now, guys, but at Thane Thran Yahoo.com. You can actually use our PayPal ID. That is the PayPal ID if you want to do a one-time donation. Or you can contact me there or at Gmail. The same thing, Thane Thran, T H E G N Thran. And uh, if you want to donate items, have us test your stuff, like Medieval Shop sponsors us and sends us all their weapons that they get in new that they'd like us to see how they perform to make sure that they're functional. When they say something's functional, Joel Tim wants to make sure it's functional. I think this has proved today more than functional. So if y'all are interested, you can go by and check him out at uh, his uh, actual page, the uh, Medieval Shop uh, page online, or look for his products. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the uh, Scottish Basket Hill backsword. And yes, it is a backsword. It doesn't have an edge on the side. This is not the broadsword bird. But it's a lot longer. It would help you in combat against rapiers and swords at the time. And they started going to stuff like this later on because it was much more effective in uh, unarmored combat and that type of speed in combat that they needed. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you uh, like our channel and tell people about it, and Barvel.